All right, what's on the bench today? Uh, this is an oscillator circuit. I've been uh, investigating single transistor oscillators, and this one uses an inductor and capacitors to do the uh, to do the oscillation. And it is an NPN transistor, bipolar. It's just uh, DC biased on. And um, you can kind of think of this, well, I don't want to think that way. Anyway, it is often labeled a Colpitz oscillator, although Colpitz, there's a large variety of topologies when people use the word Colpitz. Um, I'm not exactly sure if this is classic Colpitz. I don't think so. Most Colpitz feed back to the base of the transistor or they'll have a tank circuit out, out. Anyway, the tank circuit here, the L and the C are these, are these here. Um, you can actually remove this capacitor and it still oscillates. I'll show that. Uh, so yeah, so this would be the smallest number of components to do oscillation. Sometimes you'll see a capacitor to ground out here to keep this at, at an AC ground. Um, I've found that um, while you can put it in, it still works without it. So I'm looking for a very small component count um, for an oscillator. So I think that would be the smallest, although it seems to work much better with that in there. So let's take a look at what I've got here. I'm using things that were on the bench. I had a little 100 microfarad uh, micro Henry uh, inductor, 100 micro Henrys. And so I figured, oh, that would be good. Uh, I've got a handful of these 120 picofarads, so I'll throw that in there, and then I'll just use some 10Ks and see what happens. All right, so very, very simple uh, components. Probably you could pick better components, but this one seems to work just fine the way it is. All right, so I've got the circuit over here on the breadboard, and let's take a look. Is it oscillating? Yes, it is. Nice sine wave, too. Nice sine wave oscillator. Uh, so that's a bonus. Um, now, one of the interesting things about this, well, it, first of all, it's 1.6 megahertz. Okay, fine. Um, so one of the interesting things about this is the voltages. All right. So I'm at 5 volts per division. So 5, 10, 15, about 17 volts peak um, oscillating up and down. So what is, my, um, what is my plus V on my schematic? Well, it's 10 volts. So I'm operating this device off of 10 volts, but I'm getting 17 volts spikes out of it. Um, that's interesting. And the peak to peak variation on this waveform is 13 volts. Uh, so how do we get so many volts out of a 10 volt system? And it has a lot to do with that inductor there. So this is sort of like a, a DC to DC converter, right? You're whacking up and down this inductor. So you're pulling it down to ground, then you're letting it go and pulling it down to ground and letting it go. So it can, it can store energy and fly back up. So yeah, it's interesting. I uh, didn't expect that. Um, so we've seen several times now where inductors give you surprising results, right? So let's, uh, let's remove this cap capacitor here and I'll show you what that does to the oscillation. So this is a capacitor that goes between the collector and the emitter. And uh, it certainly does add some feedback that increases the gain of the system. Um, but it still does oscillate, although now it's oscillating at a higher frequency. It's oscillating at 2.2 uh, megahertz, uh, whereas before it was 1.6 megahertz. So uh, the Oscillation frequency is dependent on these two, uh, on these two values here. And um, if you read the literature, it would say that it's actually the parallel combination of those two. And that's not what I measure. I measure um, in order to get the 1.6 megahertz, you need to have about a total capacitance of 100 picofarads if you have 100 microhenries. So 100 microhenries plus 120 picofarads uh, will give you about the right amount. So let's take a look at the math. Everybody loves math. Uh, 2 pi square root of LC. That should be our frequency. All right. So uh, if we get out our calculator. All right. And we have 100 
uh, Mike Rose, and we have, let's start out, well, let's say, I've already done the calculation. Let's do 100 picofarads. 100 picofarads. All right, multiply those together. Take the square root of that. Take 2 times that. Take pi times that. If I can remember where pi is on this calculator. Pi is there. Pi times and 1 over there. 1.59 megahertz. And we have 1.6 megahertz. So yeah, so it's about 100 picofarads total. So, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure where the 100 picofarads comes from in the equation here, but that's, that's what we got going. Um, I can add the capacitor here on the base, which you will see most of the circuits have, and that's probably a good thing to have in a lot of circuits. So let's see if I can't add that live here in the system. All right. So I put that in here. I, I don't know, a couple micro microfarads, I'm sorry. And uh, you can see that we're now clipping at the bottom, but our voltage swings are about the same. It's just clipping on the bottom side. Um, and I actually started out with this circuit. And if you look a lot at a lot of people's uh, Colpus oscillators, you'll see this type of waveform. Even on a SPICE simulation, you'll see this type of waveform. If you take that out, though, you get this nice sine wave. So I figure, well, let's take it out. <laughs> it's probably, I could probably bias the, bias the transistor differently, too. I'm biasing it halfway. You probably should have be biased it at about two thirds of the way. You should probably have probably about I don't know, 30 or 40 K here, 10 K here. You should probably bias it down a bit, but hey, it works just great the way it is. And these are all favorite components. So there you go. It's an interesting circuit. Um, not a lot going on. Easy way to generate a clock with just a single transistor. So there you go. Uh, circuit of the day is a form of the Colpitz oscillator. Thank you.